right, so what are we working on today? We are going to work on a golf cart. A lot of y'all have these to push your race cars around in the pits and to get around the track. And I picked this one up on Christmas Eve, actually. Um, pretty decent. I paid 2,500 bucks for it. It runs, has no issues. Uh, dude had just went over it and painted everything. Um, looks pretty decent, but not to my standards, of course. And I told myself when I bought this, I said, well, I said it's got everything pretty much done to it. I don't have to stress another project. I mean, you know, with Randy's car going on and trying to work on my car, I don't have to, it's not like I get one that's ugly and I've got to go immediately take it to the shop and paint it. You know, I'd be good to go. Well, that was me wishful thinking, telling myself that, hoping that I didn't uh, didn't do that, but that didn't last long. Uh, I got home Christmas Eve, ate the Christmas dinner, and then when I got done with dinner, I was already on the couch looking for wheels, um, tires, just everything. Uh, dude had it put a windshield in it. He sold it with no windshield. He said that if he didn't get no bites over Christmas, that he was actually going to then install a windshield, but I went ahead and jumped on it because it's a good deal, so I ordered a brand new tinted windshield for it ordered uh, newer tires that are bigger uh, i'm gonna actually build a lift kit so i'll do a video probably on how to build a lift kit for out of scrap or for next to nothing because the prices of them these lift kits are just absolutely stupid uh steering wheel it's not gonna work for me so maybe for other people that's okay but that is a no-go it's way too ugly so ordered a hub adapter that adapts this to a normal car style like five bolt or six bolt steering wheel and went ahead and ordered a cheap uh steering wheel that looks has like um brushed aluminum and carbon fiber look to it so should look pretty decent um he has a two by four not a two by four one by one up here that the mirror is screwed to that don't really work for me so that's probably gonna have to be fixed uh it's not it's not cool with that so and the paint i mean as you can see in the video it looks pretty decent but here's the issue that I have with it. As soon as I seen this, I knew what it was. I can spot this from a mile away. I said, is it spray paint? He was like, yep. And I was like, man. But I was like, no big deal. It's just hard to spray actual base coat, clear coat over top of spray paint. But we'll get it done. So anyway, all I want to do right now is break this thing down. Because it is going to the shop. It is getting painted because everything I said I wasn't going to do, I'm going to do. Get this broke down, hopefully, pretty quickly. Get this to the shop and hopefully get this thing sprayed out today. And we'll then go over everything that we are going to gonna do to it. So let's get this broke down, get it on trailer, and let's head to CRC. All right, so here's what we got. I have pulled the bodies off the cart now. At the house, I got everything taken apart except for one bolt in the front and the two bolts that go down through here. Um, it's just easier to transport it to and from the shop with it basically on the golf cart since the golf cart's so easy to pull on. Um, and so when I got here, you know, I just went ahead and pulled them off real fast. And then after I paint them, the same thing, I'll put them back on the golf cart uh, out front on the trailer put two bolts through the front and then one bolt in the back, you know, that way I'm not running a ratchet strap across it or having to worry about it moving around in a better truck or blowing around or anything like that. But here's what we got. It's just spray paint. It's your normal spray paint job. So there's all kinds of imperfections and this is just a golf cart. So I know with the race car stuff, a lot of people are like, just remember, it's just a race car. Um, and with this one, uh, I will just remember that it's a golf cart because the kids actually will be riding this around the neighborhood whenever it's not at the racetrack. But when it is at the racetrack, I don't want my guys or anybody with me 
to um, be riding around in something I know I could have looked better. So we're going to sand this down, try to get a lot of this spray paint off. And then we are, what we don't get off, we're going to put it in the booth and try some tricks to get the spray paint to lock down because you can't paint on top of spray paint easily. There are tricks and ways you can do it. Um, sometimes it's still a gamble. I'm going to try to sand what I can off and then we're going to try to lock it down. Basically, spray paint is 1K, meaning it's just paint. There's no hardener, no reducers, and it. it's just it's just paint. So it never hardens up. That's the problem. Base coat, clear coat, your base coat has reducers in it. Reducer is the same thing as basically a paint thinner. Okay, so you know what a paint thinner does. So when you spray your base coat, the reducer that's in it, because it's mixed 50-50, 50% 50, 50 base coat, 50% reducer, the reducer penetrates through the spray paint. It dives down through the spray paint goes under the spray paint and then lifts the spray paint up and makes it wrinkle all over the place so the only way you can sometimes get this stuff to lock down without removing it is if you do a bunch of dust coats of base coat on it and you add a hardener to your base coat so we're gonna try a couple methods but we need to prep it anyway so we're gonna try to get all of it off that we can so we have as little to worry about as we can because i don't feel like stripping it um, because like y'all say it's just a golf cart let's get started Okay, so I don't like the little holes that are in there. I don't like the pads that are stuck on there, so we're gonna fill them in. Um, if I want to protect that from whatever, then I will use like a 3M clear protector like we're gonna put on Randy's race car, or I'll use like skateboard grip tape or something. So we're gonna fill these holes in with this, I should have showed you, with this Quick Set 50. Uh, it's a SIM product. It's for uh, urethane, adhes uh, urethane adhesive designed for automotive bumper and tap repair. Sets in 50 seconds. So cure time is 15 minutes, sets in 50 seconds. Work time is 45 seconds. Really fast setting, really fast pace. Um, let it set, then sand it. And we're not going to worry about primer or nothing. It's like y'all always tell me, it's just a race car. It's just a golf cart. So we're going to go through here, load this up. And then we're just going to fill these holes in and let it set up and then sand it smooth. And like I said, if I want to put like grip tape or something over it afterwards, I will. Um, I just don't like, I just don't like the big plastic things. I think it looks a little outdated. And if I decide I do want them, then you can always just redrill the hole. But you can't patch this after paint. Of course, so you got to do this now. Now's the time to do it. But you just want to make sure you get enough on there, and that way it doesn't shrink back. You got basically one shot at this, and then you'll grind this smooth, you know, when it sets. Like I said, it's going to set fast, so it should be it. So there's a glob on every hole. That's going to harden up really fast. We're going to keep the pad in here because people stand here, so we definitely want that. But I think I just want my fenders nice and nice and slick you know so if, if anything we might even <clears throat> have mike design up a decal you know a pretty sick wicked decal that we could put here and then that way you're sitting and stepping on the decal but it's not a protective pad just you gotta do something different man like my mind the way my mind works i'm i'm creative and um i just can't go for the factory plain chain look like everybody else mine's got to be different we're sanding it our first cut with 180. This is the problem with painting or sanding spray paint is, I don't know if you can see that. Let me see. Yeah, y'all can see that. So it clogs your paper up really bad. Um, and this is the reason why if you spray paint your stuff and then you go to a body shop and ask them to do a paint job over it, they're gonna charge you a lot more because it eats up sandpaper, it eats up time, and it's just a pain in the butt to work on top of. Thank you. 
All right, this is what sanding spray paint looks like. Yeah. There's what it looks like. That's the beauty of sanding spray paint. Let me show you this side. There's sanding spray paint. That's what it looks like. Sand spray paint sucks. Now we're gonna get a little bit of primer on this. All right, so all we're gonna do is, I've got a little rattle cam primer. Um, this ain't really, they don't really do nothing because they don't have a hardener in it. So don't bank on this. It's doing much to your project, but I just want to hit it like this is plastic where we filled them holes, raw plastic. So it doesn't really sand smooth. The spray paint will sand smooth, but you can't really sand plastic smooth. You can, but it's a ton of processes. So all I want to do is just kind of hit some of these spots. Um, actually, I need to 180 that real fast, but hit some of these spots and then let it dry while I'm working on the front piece. And then when I wet sand it, I'll have just a little bit of 1K primer on here to fill in, you know, the minor scratches. So let me sand that. And then we're gonna shoot a little bit of 1K primer on uh, the rear of this golf cart. You can already see it wrinkling, okay, right there. So I honestly might have to 1K this product, or 2K primer, this whole thing. I don't know if this is gonna even be doable without 2K primer on it because of just how bad this spray paint is. all for that can so i don't know if this will work i'll have to see if i got some more laying around somewhere so that maybe i could get a dust coat over the whole thing the 1k product dries really fast so i'll be able to paint on top of it um but honestly i might have to go ahead and 2k this and then come back tomorrow so we'll see All right, so here's what we got. I 180'd out the front. I and mean, do you see how bad um, spray paint sands? Normal stuff don't sand like this. I mean, this stuff is terrible. Anyway, we're gonna change the plans up a little. So, like I said, probably gonna have to prime that if you wanna do a base coat, clear coat. It's a golf cart. Just like y'all are gonna tell me, it's a freaking golf cart, don't get carried away. So here's what we're gonna do. I haven't 180'd none of this. I 180'd everything. Normally you would come back over, you if you wanna do a good job, and this wasn't spray paint, you'd come back over your 180 with a 320, okay? And then you'd go either just paint right over the 320 or you'd step it up. This is spray paint. Um, it's a nightmare. Let me look at look at my hands in the floor. Um, so what we need to do in this situation to do a good base coat clear coat is probably leave our 180 and try to build up some 2K on it by dust coating the 2K primer and um, then coming back blocking your primer out and all that. We're not gonna do that, okay? It is a golf cart. So we're going to take the 180. We're going to jump on a wet sand 1000. We're going to wet sand this with 1000 just to slick it out a little bit more and get rid of some of the 180. And then I just checked my leftovers and I do have some single stage. 
Now, the cool thing about single stage is normally, not always, I've got away with spraying over spray paint with single stage. So this is an ALK 200. Um, it is a black. I also have a hot rod black kit down here. So I'm kind of tempted to do this thing in hot rod black. Um, and then do like some decals in gloss black. You know, I think that would look really sick and then do the rims gloss black. So I haven't decided 100% yet. I'm really thinking about hot rod black right now. But either way, these are both single stage products. So um, what we can do is just roll straight single stage, two coats of single stage, and then one coat of clear coat, probably over it if we're doing that. If we're doing this, then it's probably just gonna be straight, you know, two or three coats of that. So let's get this wet sanded out. Also, check this out. If we get in the booth and this don't work and it starts to wrinkle, then we'll mix up some primer. We'll roll some primer over top of, you know, our failure, whatever we started, let it dry overnight, be done with the crap and uh, come back tomorrow, block our primer out, and then probably switch back to a gloss base coat, clear coat. So this is the cool thing when you're doing stuff for yourself is you can switch plans up versus if a customer hires you, you've got to do it their way. If this was a customer job, I would definitely be 2K priming this. We would definitely be blocking 2K primer out and then rolling paint over top of it. So it would be a lot more of a job, a lot more involved. But since it's mine, I can kind of go with the flow and let the job pull me left to right or whatever you know needs to be done. And my brain, I'm real creative, so I can normally, you know, off my cuff, uh, get something creative. This still has a low right here, but we're not gonna mess with it. Originally, I wanted to do a carbon fiber um, hood on here in the paint design, but if we roll with hot rod black, then man, we're just rolling straight through this. So let's get this wet sanded out, get this thing in the booth so we can see if this is gonna work. All right, so I've been thinking, and I think we're gonna try some things that I have never tried before. I was just talking to Ed for a minute, and I think we're definitely gonna go with the hot rod black, but I think we're also gonna to try to put some metallics in it. And I don't even know if that's possible, but we're gonna try it. Like I said, if it don't work, then it just turned into my primer, basically, or I might float some primer over it and then come back tomorrow, sand it, and paint it what I actually want it. So I don't ever get to really be creative on most of my work because normally there's a customer involved that wants it their way. And normally they're paying decent, they don't want to get too crazy. But I'm guessing also with the with this channel and with me owning the body shop, it probably is a good idea for me to do something that stands out just a little bit more but still matches. So being the car's black, truck's black, um, the trailer's gonna be black, we need to keep the golf cart black, but we could definitely go with the flat black. It's four, to, I read on the can because I wasn't sure I haven't used this product in a minute. So read on the can, it's a four to one to one mix. So you're gonna do four parts of your hot rod black and one part of your reducer, one part of your catalyst. Now, being I don't ever get to play around with paint, normally I'm always hired by a customer and it's pretty boring, like they want what they want. I don't get no creativity really. And then like on my car, or something like that. I don't want to get too wild and crazy because it's just such a big project. So a little golf cart like this with two pieces that are easy to come off if I decide I want to change, we're going to roll with it. Especially now that we had a curveball. So instead of just plain old flat black, we're going to add some mix to it. So what we're going to do, we're going to try, and I don't even know if this is going to work, so y'all are going to see just like me. Number one, we could wrinkle up on the spray paint. Number two, none of this might work. So we've got a House of Color uh, Chrome Flake. This is real Chrome Flake by House of Color. And then I have a House of Color lavender uh, pearl. So it's got a purple, pinkish hue flop to it. Uh, all your pearls are is just a powder, okay? So we're gonna add a little bit on this first coat because I don't have much of this left. I've had it for a long time. Um, and we're gonna add some flake. We're gonna shoot it and we're gonna see what, what happens. You know, if it don't work or it starts to wrinkle or starts to lift then we'll let it dry overnight, come back. I'll probably put some primer on it really lock everything down but uh come back tomorrow block that out sand all that out and then paint a base coat clear coat over top of it um but we're gonna at least just give this a try since we can we're not gonna wipe it down with wax and grease remover because the wax and grease remover can actually soften your um oh, that pearl strong oh mm. so i should be wearing a mask 
um, the waxing grease remover can actually soften your spray paint up and cause problems. So it's clean, we just washed it. So all I'm gonna do is pay, take a mixing stick and I'm just gonna hit some, um, I think that's plain. I don't want, like I said, I don't wanna use it all. Uh, we're just gonna hit some of that in there. And then our pearl, we don't wanna get this stuff everywhere. It's probably best to put the lid over this crap. This stuff ain't no joke. This stuff gets everywhere. Your wife, if she's not aware that you're painting, and you come home with this, she's gonna ask who, what girl's glitter is all over you, basically. So we're gonna go kind of heavy with that. And we're gonna mix this all up. This is what we got right now. Let me see if I can show y'all. So, I don't know if you can even see that. Let me take the camera down so you can watch this mix. So here's what we got. So it's got the purple flop and then the chrome pearl and then the black should be hot rod black, like it should be flat black. So we're just gonna mix this up. And like I said, this is just my first coat so I can always change it. And I don't even know it's gonna work. Sometimes the black actually will just overpower the chrome. So it's got some in there. But sometimes basically a metallic flake is like a piece of glitter that your kids would use. So sometimes the paint gets all over all the sides of the metallic flake, obviously, and then you don't really see it. Whereas a pearl is basically like a ball or a grain of sugar. So it has more sides, whereas a metallic flake only has two sides. So pretty cool. All right, let's put that in the gun and see what we get. So we're gonna start out with this just so you know what I'm doing. We're gonna put light dust coats on there to try to get this to help lock down. And we're not gonna go in on this super wet right out the gate because if we go in it super wet, then it could penetrate the spray paint and lift it. So we wanna kind of build the foundation up um, slowly layer by layer. So there's gonna be a lot of all over the place and I'll probably have to let it flash off some between coats, but we're gonna slowly build up a good coat. Once we get a good coat locked down, then more than likely you're good. We're at two minutes on this flash time and I'm not seeing any issues. So we're looking pretty good. I can see where you can see where that was plastic, you know, but hopefully that will get buried as we continue to coat it. You can see that that's just a light coat. I was just trying to let that slightly harden up. Uh, I set 10 minutes on my timer and that way hopefully it'll help it lock down. Now I'm gonna start getting a little more aggressive um, and hopefully it doesn't bite me in the butt. And then hopefully that will start covering all this stuff. The cool thing about single stage is it is thicker, so it does hide a lot of stuff. Like you can see this at the right angle. When we're done with the single stage, hopefully that will be hidden 100%. If not, this is where again, you get creative and you order like some carbon fiber vinyl um, in flat, not gloss. And then you just vinyl the that right there, if that shows. But that's where I was trying to get that dent out. So I actually cut into the plastic. But anyway, single stage a lot of times covered it. I'm just as curious what's gonna happen as y'all are right now, because like I said, this is kind of, I'm just kind of winging this, painting on top of spray paint. Um, but let's keep on hammering and see what we get. Are you listening?
what we're doing. I'm about to show you what it looks like. I think it looks a little too textured looking, which uh, Hot Rod Black is never going to be slick, first off. It's, uh, scientifically, it's not how it's designed. Basically, gloss uh, has its shine because the way it lays down. Sat Black has its shine because it actually makes a lot of orange peels so that the reflection can't reflect back to you. So it basically... Uh, you know the shape of a diamond, so it's like piling a bunch of diamonds together, okay? Um, so they ref it reflects back off of itself, um, and that's what makes it have that hot rod black. So what I'm actually do, since I already added chrome flake into it, I'm actually going to run it through the filter to cut some of the flake out. And this is the reason why I went ahead and put my flake in it to start with. Um, normally you want not necessarily put your flake in until the end, because you're kind of wasting material. Um, but I wanted to kind of know what it looked like because I didn't know I've never done this before. So uh, this is just going to pull a lot of the flake back out. And I think I'm just going to get it to where I want it to look as far as coated. Get it where I want it to look. And then on the very last coat, add that last little bit of purple pearl that's in there. And hopefully that will give it the purple sheen across the top. I think that will look better than the chrome flake in my opinion. So I'm just going to strain this out. And we might have to switch strainer sometimes where you can shake it up like this. But... Yeah, this is gonna pull a lot of chrome flake out so that hopefully the next coat is a little flatter. The chrome flake and this uh, orange peel in this does help hide the rough spots. So it is, in this situation, it is good for the job and it is a good choice, but I still wanna be happy with it. I don't want it to look like bed liner. So this is what we currently have. So you see how that kind of looks like bed liner? I just don't really like it. I mean, it's hiding stuff pretty decent. We still got this spot over here that we're still burying, but I mean, I just, I don't know. Start, I mean, it's gonna keep losing its shine as it dries, but I just feel like it kind of looks like textured plastic right now because of all of the chrome flakes. So the next pass, I'm not gonna put, there won't be hardly that much chrome flake in there. And then I'm gonna go with the purple on the final. All right, so we're gonna dump what we got left of this purple pearl. Again, that's what we're using. Uh, in this final coat, this is gonna be my final coat. So I'm hoping this thing hits, a, in the sun, I'm hoping it hits a pretty hard uh, purple uh, flat black. So, yeah. I should have actually dumped my reducer and my catalyst in here and started up and get the last little bit. Maybe I, I say black ain't gonna work, but I'm gonna keep trying to get the rest of this out with uh, the mixing stick and then stir it up. All right, so there's all that purple in there. So let's get this mixed up and I did use my old cup so I do still have a little bit of chrome in there and there's also going to be a little bit of chrome obviously left over in my um, paint cup so there still will be some chrome metallics in there just nowhere near like what I was originally thinking so like I said this is creative basically make this up as I go I don't know what it's going to do I think this is going to hit pretty cool in the sun my car hits a purple red in the sun so this thing all of us Honestly, might hit like a purple in the sun also. It'd be pretty, pretty cool if it did. It actually might almost look freaking purple when it hits. Yeah, might be too much, but I just don't know what it's gonna do with it being flat. I really don't. All right, here's what we got right now. Uh, it's still drying. I'm actually go to the house, do dinner and all that. I might come back later tonight, um, or I might honestly just wait till tomorrow to pick it up and take it to the house. But I'm gonna hit it with the sunlight real fast, which is this light that simulates what sun will look like. You can still see that spot slightly. I don't know what it's gonna look like when it's dry. Uh, and we're gonna see what it looks like. Yeah, she hits purple. So all I'm curious now is how it's gonna look once it's actually um, actually dry and it has a flat to it because I know how colors flop whenever they're glossy, which is right now it's gloss because it's wet, but I don't know what it's gonna flop like whenever it's dry. So this light actually needs to be charged. But yeah, we'll be back and we'll see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. 